Hi, it's Miguel, and we're continuing our study in the Gospel of John. <coughs> Last uh, quick review, we did um, two clips on Mary anointing Christ in verses 1 through 11, <coughs> and I won't, excuse me, I won't go over that. You can listen to the clips um, yourselves. And here we're going to try to go through verse, uh, verses 12 <coughs> through 19. And this is the triumphal entry of uh, Jesus um, coming into Jerusalem. So there are a couple of interesting things here because this is one of the um, events that all four Gospels record. Obviously here in John, and you can look at Matthew uh, chapter 21, verses 1 through 9, Mark 11, 1 through, <coughs> 1 through 10, and Luke 19, 29 through 38. So, let's get to it, uh, starting in verse 12, and as usual, reading out of the New American Standard. Uh, it says, On the next day... The large crowd who had come to the feast, when they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, <coughs> took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him. And they began to shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. Verse 16. These things his disciples did not understand at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him and that they had done these things to him. <clears throat> so the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to testify about him. For this reason, also the people went and met him because they heard that he had performed this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are not doing any good. Look, at, look the world has gone after him. <clears throat> so the Pharisees were more concerned about their own position than they were concerned about the Messiah who was right before them. <clears throat> Here we see that this is a public offer of Jesus himself as their kings as, as their king and these rulers, these religious folks um, rejected. So He's no longer mixing, you know, among the people and teaching them. That had already uh, ceased at this point. <coughs> he is, he's uh, fulfilling, <coughs> excuse me, he's fulfilling prophecy. So literally, right before their eyes, he's fulfilling prophecy. And these folks were so blind that they didn't see it. So I, I just wanted to go over a couple of verses here that quote, that are quoted here. <clears throat> Verse um, 15, uh, that is in the book of Zechariah 9 9. And this is, he's quoting the verse there. Um, let's see, yeah, um, I just want to make sure. 9 9. <clears throat> so you can look that up to see the fulfillment of the prophecy. And verse 16 is um, typical of the disciples, is that a lot of the things that were happening before them, uh, they didn't get until after. Even some of the things that Jesus said repeatedly about um, him rising from the dead, um, they just didn't get it. And after, then it clicked. Uh, so we, we see a lot happening here. We, <clears throat> the, the group... All these people that um, had seen Lazarus raised from the dead. And then uh, you have this group of people that are 
just testifying about it. So this is another uh, confirmation of the deity of Jesus Christ. And instead of the religious people, the Pharisees embracing the Messiah, they uh, reject him and they in turn are rejecting the rejecting God. So they are rejecting God, um, the Son sent to them. Um, instead of embracing him, they um, conspire to kill him. Another thing here is this coming of Jesus was in humility. <clears throat> and again, I quoted that verse, Zechariah 9, 9. Um, they were hoping that, you know, he's going to be their king. And eventually, of course, um, when he comes back, he will. And he is king. Uh, he is God. But ha they were looking for somebody that was going to conquer uh, immediately. You know, some somebody that, like a war horse um, you know, on his horse and to, to kind of just conquer, lead and conquer. And that will ultimately happen in the book of Revelation 19.11. Well, I wasn't going to do this, but let me just go over there real quickly. <coughs> Here, uh, Revelation cha uh, chapter 19, verse 11, it says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and wages war this is talking about Jesus but this time he's coming in humility just uh, think about it he's on a on a donkey and just sitting on a donkey and the people are are, are putting uh, branches and palm palm trees and the branches of the palm trees and this is kind of where we get uh, what referred to as Palm Sunday so he is uh, by doing this publicly he's presenting himself officially to the nation as the Messiah and the Son of God and um, <clears throat> we we see that uh, he's rejected so the first time this is going to be just a quick clip but the first time coming in humility and the second time coming as a conqueror so going, you could look up some of those references, um, Old Testament references, and even, as I said, the New Testament references where it <clears throat> talks about this incident, uh, the, the public display of Jesus. Um, well, some of the folks were acknowledging him as, as the, the Messiah. Um, and then you have this in the four Gospels. So you can look that up yourselves. Uh, the triumphal entry uh, entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. This is verse chapter 12 verses 12 through 19. So here um, we're gonna go over. Well, there's a I mean a huge chunk of the chapter that's left. But as usual, I pray that this would encourage you to those that believe drive you to the Word of God and kind of just. Look up these references. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to look them up yourself so you can confirm what I'm saying is true. Um, I, I want you to be students of the word and I want to be a student of the word as well. And to those who don't know Christ, I would pray that God would open your eyes to his, your need for him. That unless you repent, you're on your way to hell. That there would be conviction of sin. That you would repent and turn to him that His blood would cleanse you from all unrighteousness, that He would fill you with the Spirit, and that you would come to know Him as Lord and Savior even today.